What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast, the end of the Queen Mary Dark Harbor Sliders takeover. Today I'm here with Shudders and Sparrow. How are you guys doing today? Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, Tired. <laughs> I feel that. First off, uh, a big congratulations. You two are parents. Yes, we are. When? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, so congratulations. How is the parent life treating you guys so far? I what I just said tired <laughs> um, it's, it's been good it's it's definitely a challenge but I mean like it's it's so worth it like I I can't believe like you know our son's here and it's 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 just a journey you know yeah yeah I mean especially like through this horrible pandemic like it's awesome to kind of like do things differently yet adapt and overcome Right. And, and I mean, he's doing really well. And, you know, like, it could be worse. So. <laughs> no. I, I think that the, you guys having a child was probably one of the biggest positive things that happened in 2020. Well, honestly. honestly. Thank you. Um, <laughs> really because that. 2020 was just a horrible year. And I, when I saw you two were having a, a baby boy, I thought, thank God there's some positivity going on in 2020 because we need it at this moment. So, congratulations. I know you two are going to be. I know you two are amazing parents, um, and the journey is just going to get better from here. So, thank oh, you. Yeah. It's going to really be awesome. Agree. Queen Mary Dark Harbor, the first year I ever attended this event, 2019. Uh, and right. yeah, I, I got invited out for media night, and I loved it so much. I was like, I want to come back again. So, I bought a ticket and came back, I think, the next week. Uh, very interesting event. I, I think this is probably, I have to say, this is way better than the other events I usually go to that are strict to doing limit. They have pretty much limitations on them. Queen Mary dark Harbor seems like they have a lot of freedom to do what you guys want. And I love that so much. Oh yeah. No, it's definitely, it's definitely like a sandbox to play in. Like, you right. know, we're lucky enough and very fortunate to basically like be put in a spot or a room or like on the streets and given a costume or like a, premise of what your character is then you get to build whatever character you want or like as long as it's in like the main structure of dark harbor and the main structure of the stories and it's it's such a very like cool atmosphere you know seeing all the creativity like from other people who work there right um you know i do give props to like horror nights who do scenes you know like very you know one thing after another and same with right. knots. I do, I, I give them props, but like personally, I wouldn't be able to do something like that. Like, you know, I, I, I started off from dark Harbor, like right at dark Harbor. I, I didn't go to any other haunts, you know, and I don't think I could be able to go to a different haunt because of how my experience is, you know, with right. Harbor, but yeah, it's, it's really cool, you know, having like this giant playground, you know, basically to play around in and, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool because it's like you get a set of guidelines or rules, and then it's like you'll get a character to act. But then anything that the character does, says, speaks, has an accent, not has an accent, has a walk, a limp, like that is kind of just up to you, right. you know? And it's kind of cool because, like, you could be creative. Like, you could be some kid's son from whatever, you know, 1940-something to, like, an uncle of this person or whatever and you can like build your own creativity and then some things that like i'll see someone do something creative that like we work with and i'm like man that was a cool idea and then like i want to switch it up like every other couple nights or like i with my whole thing is like i have like a background ish but then it's like i'll try to do something that changes it up here and there just right. to kind of keep things fresh at, after every night because like we do have some people that get the passes and like they come like you know every night so it's like i feel it's like if i see this person again then i'll like i'll try something new so that they don't see like a repetitive like same you know character person right it's like character add yeah you know, way you know no, I, <laughs> I think that's something I, I did that at knots specifically and it was cool to see uh, every week something new come from someone else to try to do something different so hearing that is like really cool when you see the same people you're like oh let me try something different switch it up a little bit you know what, what i'm used to doing i think that's really cool and also uh, from a from a standpoint of being a character it's just it, that's uh, that's a ton of talent right there that's that's not 
you know, you're, you're used to doing your, your standard stuff, but then when you, when you challenge yourself to like switch it up, like that's, that's real talent right there. If I, if I might say so myself. So that's awesome. I believe, like I get for me as like a, a person, character actor or whatever I am, a talent, um, I get bored with complacency mm -hmm. and doing the same thing, like, you know, repetition over and over. So it's like, I like to try to do things new to not only like challenge myself, but like, you know, try to challenge like the other person or whoever else I'm working with. Right. And it makes me feel like more of like, kind of like an artist, I know, say, like in a weird way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I mean, yeah, that's usually like with me. And plus I, I already do have like ADD or ADHD <laughs> on, on the regular, so. <laughs> it just all comes together, man. It comes to fruition. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's take it, let's go from the beginning now. What, what, at what age did you know you really wanted to, to do scare acting and just scare the hell out of people? You want to go first or? Why, because I'm the old person? I didn't say that. <laughs> You're the one who suggested that, okay? That no, was not for, me. You can go first. No, it's, you, it's probably fresher in your no, memory because you're younger. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Um, I mean, like, hell, I've wanted to be a scare actor, you know, maybe since I was... 13, 12, you know, I, I, the first time I actually like, I'm originally from Arizona, so we nice. have, um, different haunts out there. Right. One of the most popular haunts at the time, I don't know if it still exists or not, but it was called Fear Farm. I just and, went there last season. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. such a cool experience. It's, it's completely different from like what you experience out here. Right. And, um, you know, like I would, I grew up going out there all the time, like every October and, you know, seeing the scare actors perform you know every night right. and then one year i um me and my family took a trip up here to california and we visited not scary farm finally and we visited horror nights finally and i knew like i wanted to do this one day like you know i i, I just loved you know seeing the sliders at knots i love seeing like the set decoration at like horror nights like i just loved the whole atmosphere and vibe and it was my eight, when I turned 18, I just graduated, you know, from high school. Um, you know, I, I think I had a couple months before auditions for Dark Harbor and I, I had never even heard of Dark Harbor either. Like I was planning on going to Knott's or, you know, going to Horror Nights. And I just decided to look up, you know, haunts around LA that wasn't, you know, and I came across Queen Mary's Dark Harbor and I decided to, you know, fill out the application for a audition and went to the auditions and got in, you know, like, and I've been there ever since it's the, if, if dark Harbor would have happened last year in 2020, right. it would have been my sixth season there. Oh, nice. But, um, yeah, no, like it was, it, it's, I knew like at a young age that like, I really wanted to do this and like for being a slider, I wanted to do it since, I mean, maybe when I turned 18, 19, because I used to hang around not scary farm, watch sliders and ghost town and stuff. And I thought that was really cool. And I really wanted to do it. So nice. What about you, old man? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, like I didn't want to be a monster <laughs> when I first started, like, to be, yeah, like it, it was weird. So, um, I started from not scary farm. Okay. So, um one of my old friends you know like I was looking for a job like I was job hunting doing whatever gigs here and there and you know I honestly just wanted money to party I guess there you, you could say that's, what, that's what life, so if you just don't party in life then what's the point you know it's like <laughs> right and you know I was like kind of like a young kid at the time and like my buddy was like hey you can get so you know a certain amount of money to work the you know at Knott's Berry Farm and all you have to do is piss people off by scaring them and you get a fat paycheck and you, know, and you can get like a six pack or something or whatever and hang out and I was like okay I'm down let's do it <laughs> And getting yourself through the door in the very beginning, way back when, before, like, I feel like the old person saying this, like, before the, the technology started getting better, yeah. you got to, like, sit out there for almost two days straight in the sun. Yeah. And, and just to get to the, um, just to get to the, uh, what is it, the deployment office. Right. Just to fill out an application and to sit more for, like, <laughs> nine and a half more hours in the sun 
just to get a spot somewhere in a maze, you know, like that was fun. Not really, but <laughs> you know, it, once you get yourself through the door and like, it was almost like for me, like, even though I was like, whatever, I'm just going to do this. I'll pop out of some hole, scare somebody or whatever. To me, like, it was kind of like a drug when I, when I got that first, like, not this, but the scare that was like, Ugh, it's just a shrug at the shoulder. But when I actually got someone to the ground, it was just like gut wrenching scream. <laughs> it was just yes. like, I, there was something that kind of grew from it. Right. It was just like, I don't know if it's a good thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing, but now I'm addicted. Am I messed up? <laughs> <laughs> it's therapeutic is what it is. Oh, it, it's definitely therapeutic. Like for me, like I, I felt like, you know, like obviously like I'm the kid with the glasses. So at that time, like being the one with the glasses wasn't hipster. I was kind of like a dork in school. So like I got picked on. So like for the first time, I guess it, I felt like empowered right. in some way. <laughs> you know and i'm like right. now i could be the jock or whatever you know instead of you know uh, the, the reverse way around so i was like maybe it could have been that way where it's like i can kind of like give payback in a way but right but it was a drug and i've been loving it ever since that's freaking sweet man i i just hearing those those uh you it's funny you brought up the knot stories i've heard so many of those back in the day camping out two three days and just just people just going like bringing tents every everybody was ready and they they i heard one person go and mind you this we weren't even guaranteed to get a job we were just out yeah. there just camping hoping yeah. that it worked out and i was like yeah man we and then, like, like we were kicked out of their parking lot so many times because it's like you know there's like 200 plus people right. and amount of cars and so i remember you know being the old folk person whatever like before it was uh fenced up we used to park in the um hollywood wax museum or not the hollywood wax museum the buna park wax yeah. museum movie land, and there was movie land area, wax if you go down beach right there's like this big area where they have like transistors or whatever in the parking lot yeah we would park our cars directly behind it so that the cops wouldn't like tell us to leave so like the cops would just roll by and they you know they don't see our cars because we were parked behind like that whole area and man, we used to like bring peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We used to like throw Nerf balls because at that time there was no iPhone 12, yeah. 13. Like we had 8265 cell phones, Nokia. <laughs> you know? so it was just like we would hear from, you know, chatter here and there that like, oh, they're opening up the room. They're having people lined up. So then all of us would pile in the cars, get to knots, wait for another like couple hours and be like, oh, they're not opening up. Security saw us to leave. All right, let's go back to the Wax Museum parking lot. You know? <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah. It, it's just nuts how much technology has taken over this year. Like where literally people can go on a website now and just fill out an application and then get an appointment time. Oh yeah, right. and like there's some people that are like they'll do that and they'll be like, oh man, I had to wait 40 minutes just for <laughs> online so I can get like an application process, and I'm and they would you know, complain on Facebook. And I'm like, you guys don't even know what is that, what the waiting thing is about. That's like freaking, that's like me with Comic-Con, man. Trying to get Comic-Con tickets these days. Oh, trust. I know. <laughs> I don't, I, for starters, I'm a, I'm gonna go off topic here, but I don't like the lottery system. They do now. I, I, I hate it. Don't. I, I only got to go two years now. And the first year I went, I only got two days. Right. And the second year I went, I, I, I actually got four days. And I was so thankful for it, but it was the most expensive weekend I have ever done. It's so worth it, though. It's like if I'm going to be in debt, I'm going to be in debt happy. <laughs> oh, I was so happy. I spent so much money. I was just like, you know what? Don't care. This is this is heaven. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I went. I've, I've been twice to 2004, 2005, back when it wasn't as big as it is today. Uh, and you used to be able to donate blood and go in. They used to give you free tickets, Red Cross. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. I remember That's doing cool. that with uh, K Rock. Yeah. I really, you did that with K Rock. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't know that. That's um, cool. But obviously, if they were doing that today, the line wow. would be all the way down to Mexico. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would so. be like one of the people in line to try to get those free tickets. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like gallons of our, like already pumped blood and be like, here you go, I already got it. Here's I'm just saying, ticket. like, the, the people that you see making the hot dogs and the tacos, they'll probably make a lot of money in that line that day, dude. Oh, I'd, yeah. Mm. I'd be one of those people buying, like, at least four hot dogs or something just to last me through the day. <laughs> um, 
So when you first started at Dark Harbor, what were you guys put into a maze or did you go straight to streets? I was put into a maze. Okay. Um, my first year um, was 20, 2015, I think. 2015? Yeah, I think it was 2015. <laughs> um, it's been a while. <laughs> um, but it was, I think 2015 was the opening year of the new revamped Lullaby, um, when it, Lullaby became Lullaby. So I was the opening cast for that maze. Um, but I was put into the vortex room, okay. um, I, which was, um, basically the shower room, the most haunted room in the ship, but it was a recreation of that room. Right. Um, basically, you know, our boss, David Wally was like, this is your room. You get to play all in this room, the room next door. You can play in that room too. figure it out. Just stay within like the parameters of the story. And there you go. And you know, it was, it was definitely a journey because like the first weekend I was terrified, didn't know what to do. Like I, like I sucked, like I sucked the first week and it was terrible. But then like, finally I, I decided to do this weird, like spider crawling contortion kind of thing. That kind of stuff freaks me out. Oh my God. <laughs> and it worked. And like, you know, I threw on some knee pads because like I, was personally practicing sliding at home. This was before I knew like there was a slider team at Dark Harbor. I didn't, I had no idea. Um, I didn't know like the rules of how to be a slider. I didn't know anything. Like I was just practicing at home doing it myself. Mm -hmm. And I threw my slider pads and decided to like slide around in the room and do these contortions and stuff. And our boss and management liked it and was like, yeah, you're approved. Do it, do whatever you want. This is really cool. And you know, I, it just kind of built from there. I stayed in Lullaby for three years and then I moved to Circus, um, to be the, the spider Queens the, uh, from nice. 2017, eight, no, 2018, 2018 was the yeah. Circus spider. Um, that only lasted a year. And then 2019 was my first year finally out on the streets because, you know, she's really like the black widow, right? Yeah. I was yeah. like the black widow, but, um, yeah, no, I built, you know, I, I progressed through Dark Harbor. I, I didn't automatically get on streets. You know, I, I worked my butt off to, you know, get where I was. She's and like, I did my time. Now it's time to go yeah. and have some fun. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I did my time. I'm this, I'm here now. Like, <laughs> I felt super accomplished finally, you know, being out on streets that first night. Right. And it was so cool, like, you know, like seeing everybody out there and just, you know, having the freedom just to run around finally and. But yeah, no, I started off in a maze and, you know, I, I thank everything for that maze. You know, I loved my lullaby family, like, you know, super protective over the whole entire cast and, right. you know, it was, it was fun. What about you, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, uh, are we talking about Dark Harbor or are we talking about knots or like kind of in the beginning in general? Let's go knots because I do want to hear some knots stuff, but then, yeah, we'll go to Dark Harbor too. Well, at Knott's, like, I mean, after, like, like I said, like, trying to go through that, like, 18 hour to 24, like, it was more like a 48 hour day. Right. Like, it's, you're, you're, t like, you're having, like, two days gone when you try to, back then, try mm -hmm. to get a, um, a position. Um, I was sitting at a table, and they told me about a maze called that, like, a buddy of mine who was just like, hey, if they offer this maze, I'm not going to say the maze, because I don't want to get, you know, all hate on it. But my buddy was like, don't say yes to this maze. Go somewhere else. Like, you're not going to have fun. You're going to be miserable. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll keep that in mind. So they, I, I get through that whole process. I, you know, I, I go to the area where um, one of the, the maze supervisors, and he's like, hey, I'm going to, insert blank maze, <laughs> offer you this maze, you know. And for me, like, I – for some odd reason, like I, I had in my head, I was like, all right, well, maybe I'm not like suitable for that. Like, I kind of want like a little bit maze where I get more comfortable. Right. Um, so he turns around and is like, all right, cool. Let me, let me see what I can do. You know? And I, I feel like that's like the real acting where it was like, all right, let me see what I can do. And he grabs like a binder, turns around, grabs a binder, talks to somebody else who's like the other person's maze supervisor. And it was like, you know, does that whole like thing. And they look at me to like, look me up and down and I'm just sitting there and there he's like okay so we have this brand new maze mind you the year was 2009 and he's like it's a brand new maze 
it's going to debut this year. No one knows about it. And it's uh, it's in 3D. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. It's in 3D. Like, that's kind of rad. Right. Um, technically, it wasn't in 3D. It just <laughs> had, like, these really cool glasses that made everything bright. But um, he's like, he's like, imagine going down in Mexico and going to this and that. And uh, the maze was called uh, Dia de las Muertas. Nice. So I got to... I got to open up that maze and he, he sold it hard on me <laughs> and it was, it was, it was actually fun. Like I, I got to enjoy like a lot of things. I got to be um, a part of their grave, like the, the dead, like um, I forgot what we were called. We were called something in Spanish. I apologize. We were like, we were like the dancing dead in the graveyard. Okay. I don't, I don't think we're the souls that left to the afterlife. So it was just kind of like, you can do whatever you want in the cemetery. Nice. And, then I went from, I did one year in a maze, went from a maze to streets in ghost town. Oh, went to ghost town. <laughs> Jumps right into ghost town, man. Yeah. I mean, like it was, it, that was like, that was like a prayer and a wish to get like on that list to go to ghost town. Like it was really fun. Um, gosh, I've been like, I've been gone so many different areas. Then I opened up, uh, what was it? Why am I drawing a blank? No, uh, zombie one. Why am I drawing infected? Oh, um, yeah, infected. There you go, infected. I did. I opened up first year infected. That was a brutal year, man. That that that, that one was cool. I was there all the time. I never got to go through it, but from everyone I've talked to, that was a that was quite the exercise right there. It was the most physical thing because I went as a guest a lot, like because I that was the first year that they did the um the past too, like the was it the um the, the newer past this was it the yeah. skeleton key yeah with the skeleton key one i think right. yeah um and or, fright lane. or no i don't remember what it was but like the newer fright lane pass or whatever okay and like my, me and my friends got it and we went all the time and we like always got there at like opening gates to get that like time slot right. and it was the most like physical thing like I, but it was so fun like oh yeah it was it was cool i mean like we had we were running alpha and bravo like we were gonna work out every night and if like everything worked well it was like the funniest fun time ever um then after that i i ended my Knott's Berry Farm time at Carnival. Oh, and cool. that one was super fun. I got to be a barker with a prosthetic, got to be in makeup. So I got to end it on like a huge high note. Um, and then there was like a, su- like a, the summer went by or like the new year went by. And I was like, do I want to stay at Knott's? You know, like I, I, in my head, I was like, I kind of want to go like kind of like a world tour type thing. Yeah. And I became a um, I became a guest that like following year or during that season I came in and like I fell in love with Dark Harbor for like the security protocol like right in the very beginning mm-hmm. like going through like I mean feels like you're going through like prison or something but right. like the fact that like they're taking pens they're oh, taking yeah. keychains certain you know things that can like you I know stab people I was like okay they're actually you know, really going through like, cause you know, I'm not going to lie at knots. You go through the security and you can have like a Swiss army Anything. knife and no one cares, you know, right. like, um, but then we went to like the mazes and, you know, like I saw everybody and like, I saw the shows and stuff like that. And it just looked fun. So I was like, in my head, I was like, I know where I'm going next year. Right. Like I want to try to get in the door. And um, yeah, first year I was in a maze and I got, mm, not even knowing i got um a letter of recommendation from nice uh, randomly didn't even ask him it was from uh scott dieterman oh i'm so doing a shout out to pyro himself <laughs> you know it's funny you bring up dieterman because every podcast i've been asking the sliders to he, i know he's watching i know he was gonna oh, watch he all does. this he does <laughs> like, like i'm doing a, a shout out to him like i wouldn't be where i was in a lot of different positions if it wasn't for him so like um yeah he did a letter of recommendation told a couple of people to be said hey look out for this guy and i kind of went to the front of the line my first year and got yeah lucky him huh and I kinda... <laughs> she's like i'm over here doing my time wait take wait. i was an asshole <laughs> <laughs> but, but like on my behalf i was like well i did time at another part yeah. so it, no it you got, did got a little bit you did but yeah like in um 
about 75% into the, my first year I was on the slider team, like inadvertently like, hey, you know how to slide. Guess what? You're going to play outside too. So nice. Following years, I've just been sliding and mm, minus 2019. Yeah. You were a manager 2019. Yeah. The, the last year, I was a talent supervisor. Put on a suit and he was like, it's time to get that suit game going. <laughs> right. So then it, it also told me that I, I, I would like to probably put the suit back in the closet and maybe do more for five more years. I saying. actually think I remember seeing a lot of those pictures on uh, your Instagram shutters. Uh, mm -hmm. it just like, <laughs> I remember seeing a lot of those, those funny pictures every week. Uh, uh -huh. and I thought that was hilarious. Uh, didn't know what it meant at the time because I was a little kind of confused, but then I was like, Oh, okay. Now I, I get what it means. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really funny. Like, you know, it, it was weird because we, it was our second year, you know, actually dating and he now being like a manager position. And it was just like one of those things where I was just like clock in and I'm like, I don't know you like that. For <laughs> yeah. We only got to like take from, pictures and that was pretty much it. Like From this time to this time, I'm a manager. Didn't I, talk to him. You're, all not, you're, you're not in my uh, jurisdiction when it comes to things. <laughs> Walks and drives in together, clocks in. All right. Don't know who you are anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shutters who <laughs> i know brianna <laughs> oh man um yeah i mean good old dieter man i know he's gonna kill me after watching all these podcasts um he, i know he's gonna text me like you asshole I, I don't know why you did that um because i wanted to embarrass you uh, Dieterman puts up with a lot of our crap you yeah know? I, we, I, I give him you know I give him props for how much he deals with with he's, us. He's a resident older guy that <laughs> yeah. he gets messed with. So, you know, you know he's watching. What do you, what, what would you like to say to Mr. Dieterman? Some words of wisdom or some thanks or whatever. What do you want to say to Mr. Dieterman out there? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say anything because he mean, knows. I, 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 feel, <laughs> I feel like after like being friends with him for so long, like he already knows like how I like how I feel about him and like. He already knows that, like, I give him, like, so much credit that he stuff. Like, I, I do more busting his balls now these days than I than I do, like, you know, giving like, him props. Like I said, he puts up with so much of our crap, you know, like, you know, he does a lot for us that, you know, doesn't go unnoticed, you know. We right. do notice it and we do appreciate what he does for us. And, you know, like, it's just, we're just surprised he's, you know, stuck around this long with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised like I mean like he just doesn't be like all right I'm gonna work with another group and hang out with other people like you guys <laughs> suck around <laughs> <laughs> one day he's just gonna show up be like all right you know uh they moved me over here uh it was by my request so Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh the man he leaves is gonna be the day I'm actually concerned because I'll just all be right. like whoa what, what's wrong what's with happening? you <laughs> <laughs> so Scott I can't wait to see you on the live podcast my friend we're gonna have fun mm -hmm. um I'm told, I was told anonymously to ask about rum spice. Oh, no. <laughs> what can uh, you tell me about that? Listen. <laughs> I, know, I, I know her. I know her personally. I know she's going through. Listen, she's a slut. So, uh, <laughs> she's going through some uh, tr troubled times, but, uh, you know, she's, she, she's very um, vagina friendly. I know that. Um... <laughs> Uh, what else? Like she she slept with a lot of the sliders. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, like I mean, I don't like I don't know her that well, but I know her. <laughs> we've, we've got some beef, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I think she's a slut. She's the epitome of a whore. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. okay, just for like the people out there, rum spice is. is 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 Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I bet people who are watching that right now are going, "Who the hell are they talking about?" Who is this bitch? We need to find her. No, like, uh, oh, rum oh, spice is. To get, I can't. With all the, just to be all the serious, um, one of the nights I wanted to challenge myself even further, and see if I can pull off being a girl. And see what it was like, you and, know, being yeah. in a girl's perspective at Dark Harbor, you know? Because I'm not going to lie, like, being a woman at Dark Harbor 
like, and, and just in, you know, the haunt industry in general, like we get harassed with a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do give Mike the props, you know, for <laughs> taking this role, like actually seriously. And, you know, like, you know, he could have done it, you know, a completely different way, but, um, you know, he did, he did it to challenge himself and well, see what it was like. You did you know? go full yeah, method on that one? Did you do like a Heath Ledger? Full, full hmm? method? Full method like Heath Ledger? Or? Well, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I wanted <laughs> yeah. to, I wanted to, I mean, I, well, but the little bit story before that was like trying to pull um, teeth just to get the approval to do it because with my other character, Sparrow, he kind of doesn't act serious. So when I'm out of my makeup, people just think I'm the same person and I'm kind of not. Yeah, but like I had to get three people's approval to do that character in the first place, and once I got it, and I was like, I decided to make a commitment. Um, I went so far as to shaving my arms and shaving my legs, and um, I even shaved my I shaved like my whole entire face and parts of my chest that was going to be like maybe possibly exposed. Oh, you didn't go full ledger. You went full Jared Leto. <laughs> oh, no, I, I went, I went like method plus because like, I mean, my <laughs> that comparison, <laughs> like I, I have people like of actors, like, I mean, Heath Ledger, Jared Leto, Johnny Depp, people that go into their roles, uh, Gary Oldman. Right. And what I really wanted to do was, you know, like go full method, be a woman role you know, and do it with respect and do a woman, a woman role who is also a character as well. So it was like, there was layers of the the thinking into it and seeing how it is from a female perspective. For me, honestly, when I was like, I, I was talking about this about two weeks ago mm -hmm. to two of the members of our team and they asked about the same thing. And I was like, I, I firmly, believe every male who works in the haunt industry should have one or two nights where they do a female role where they have to be female and like the whole entire time you go on your break you can be your, yourself again or whatever but like i feel that some some of you know the males in the industry need to kind of have that like feel of how things are mm -hmm. and for me it was a very eye-opening experience because then it was like I looked, I guess you could say maybe if there was like a 10 skill of how good I looked as a girl. You looked, you looked pretty hot. I had a lot of <laughs> great, high. I had a lot of great help to, okay, to bring pause, that character pause. together. Mind you, like <laughs> we weren't even dating yet. Like we weren't even boyfriend, girlfriend. Like we were like just flirting with each other this season. And we were kind of <laughs> keeping under wraps. And this night that he did it, he came walking up to me wearing a freaking corset. And I was just kind of like, Okay, so this is the guy that so I think I'm getting you're... into. <laughs> it was it was a little like shocking at first, but like I dug it. Like because I, you know? I remember on my Instagram, like I remember like doing like a, a secret character, you know, like that's going to be introduced tonight, you know, and like I only told maybe three people. Didn't even tell me. And I told like other people, I was like, yeah, keep this shut. Like I, it's like an Area 51 thing. I want to try to, like, it was kind of like. It was like self research and like you know how like when I said like I get bored of like complain complacency. Right. Like it was just like I it wasn't that I was so bored that I wanted to be a girl, but it was just like I wanted to have like an eat like a, a huge challenge to me, you know, that I've like never done before. I didn't do it at knots, I didn't do it, you know, at any other type of mazes, but I was just like, Can I do this? And kind of do it somewhat successfully and <sighs> There was some guys that I had turned their heads and it was, it was great. Like, you know, and I, and I didn't want to walk, like I had to talk the talk. I had to walk the walk, you know, and it was, it was like, very convincing, very like, it was, it was kind of, it's kind of scary in a weird <laughs> way. Like it was like double the work, you yeah. know, because like you're, you're doing a character that you've never done before, but you're also doing a character within a character. And when it came to like, out there on set, I wanted to do full method. I'm no longer Sparrow. I'm no longer Mike. You know, like I'm no longer like myself. I'm someone else. So it's like I'm someone else learning how to scare for the first time, which was right. weird, you know, and I'm a female. Like, 
and then it was we had a camera crew to document that that would have been like a really good little mini doc right there that's that's what killer said you know (laughs) if harbor happens this year you know due to you know covid and stuff um I would, I will be very much happy <laughs> to call out that night to like document this Dude, because. Let me know. I'll bring the cameras and we'll bring right. the GoPros. We'll do everything. <laughs> All right. Like to me, it was, it was so like, was and, I, and I also suggested for like, you know, females to try to do it with like, you know, being a guy. Right. Well, I mean, like there is a difference because like, you know, like what you did, you experienced what a female goes through at haunt. Like I said, like females do get a lot more harassed at haunts especially in the lullaby maze um i'm not gonna lie like working the lullaby maze it's so like um i'm gonna like just say trigger warning for you know viewers who do get a little bit like sent or not sensitive but like triggered by this but um it does bring like especially in lullaby people's inner pedophilia Mm -hmm. i guess comes out um like with with the guests um who visit because i don't know how many times i've seen and heard and actually done dealt with personally like you know both men and female who harass the actresses in who are playing scary mary um who are portraying you know a child saying that they're sexy oh i want to like touch you and like feel you up and do all this stuff and it's so gross to me like you know what i mean like getting like hearing this coming from like an adult you know a, an adult right. talking technically about a child you know what i yeah. mean like yes you know like the people working there are you know over age they're you know you're over 18 right. but it's still the concept you know what mm. i mean like it's but you know like it's he experienced it you know you know what multiple it's like. times like and, and some of the times when like i mean you know like i i talked to brie about it like later on i talked to other girls about it you know like on break and stuff like that like i would just be randomly kind of like on the streets gonna set up for like some sort of scare or whatever and some idiot guy just comes and grabs my butt mm-hmm. comes and grabs my chest mm-hmm. you know grabs my arm and starts pulling me with like you know their friends or whatever and i'm just like mm, no like <laughs> you know like there's there's rules you know and then it was like it came to the point where i like i wasn't mad at them because they're being dumb obviously Mm -hmm. but like i was just like this is what they go through on a day-to-day basis you know like and it was weird because talking with a lot of friends that work in lullaby maze and sometimes circus too because i'm throwing that in there too it's like there's rules when people go through the event and everything, it's like, don't touch the monsters, don't do this and that. And it's like, they go in there, they get to the front of the line and it's like, they forget. Their brain they turns turn off. Like, you know, like they turn it, and I hate to say it, but it's like 90 something percent males that follow under the category of like sexual assaults in Whoa, the mazes. What happened here? What happened? Am I frozen? Oh, I think that uh, was like enough. Yeah, sorry. You're good. You're oh, good. Okay. I thought I was frozen. I was like, no. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. You just uh, disappeared off the screen for a minute. <laughs> but yeah, like, and it's just like they get in the front of the line and they feel like it's okay to sexually assault someone who's 18 and older, right. like actor or talent. And I'm just like, wow, okay, this happens. And it, like, to me, like towards the end of the night, it was like, it, it very much like wore me out you know, mentally where I was just like, dang, you know, like, you know, it makes you see female from a male's perspective, like see females that go through there and they come out like, cause you know, when, before rum spice even happened, it's like, we would see each other like at the end of the night or, you know, end of the morning or whatever. And everybody has their makeup, you know, worn off and everybody's sweating and stuff like that. We're all going to punch out. And it's just like, oh yeah, you know how it feels, you know, from my perspective, but it's like, no, I don't know how it was from your perspective, but I do know now, you know? Right. But I mean, like I said, you know, like I, I firmly believe after doing it and like doing it well, respectively, and I've created some sort of like character 
that's rumored about it, you know, like hush, I, hush, I'm, pr- secret, I'm, secret. I'm proud of it. You know, I'm proud of her for what she's right. done and I'm going to bring her out oh, as soon yeah. as it happens again. I can't wait. Like, and you know, like I have backstories for her and everything. Like I, I want to do like an Instagram. I want to do like <laughs> all this stuff for her. She's going to be a social media influencer. <laughs> right? No. Let's get, her, let's get her a nice big she's following a, right now. She's have a palette in 2022. Oh my god! Drop. Makeup palette. <laughs> so, in other words, Rum Spice is your multiverse self. Ooh. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I'm bringing comics in this now. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah. We got Good the one. multiverse coming in. Oh yeah, the multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's dope. I never thought about that. There you go. So you're like tonight, the multiverse is taking over Dark Harbor. Right. <laughs> No, I, I, I respect the hell out of you just from that story. Um, and I, I am 100% agreeing with everything you said. Um, I, I've personally witnessed it as a guest uh, of people who act fucking stupid at the event. Um, so this is a PSA from <laughs> Knights of Horror and the Queen Mary Sliders. Yeah. If you're going to any of these events, whether it be Dark Harbor, whether it be Scary Farm, whether it be Horror Nights, Six Flags, wherever in the world you are, one, don't be a fucking asshole. <laughs> Two, drink responsibly because we don't like to deal with drunk assholes. Nope. And three, I'm gonna say it again: don't be a fucking asshole. Right. <laughs> don't fucking touch the monsters. Don't touch the <laughs> fucking monsters, man. Like God, they, they got a job to do. They're hired to do it. You paid the ticket for it. Don't be an asshole. Don't touch them. They're human too. Right. right. And it's the same thing with like you know like control and everybody else that works at the event. It's just like have a good time. That's what you're there for, you know? See, with Lullaby for me, the thing that creeps me out is I do not like ghost girls. It scares the hell out of me. So Same. I think there was one scene in Lullaby where, like, I think you mentioned the shower scene where they zoom across while you're walking through it. At least that's where I experienced 2019. Yeah, that was that's the newer the newer. Oh, version. the zipline part? Yeah. No, no, no. no. Um, it's, it's, it's in the shower, right? Yeah, they're like, they like run across and there's like four people and I'm like, what is that? Oh yeah, and it's like, they're playing hide and seek. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it scared the hell out of me. And I'm just like, okay, I want to leave here now. I don't, I don't like this. I I love how Lullaby has evolved, you know, throughout the years. You know, like I said, Lullaby was my home and it's really cool seeing, you know, the progression and like the new people coming in every year and like the story evolving and yeah, no, definitely like I, it it was a lot scarier 2019 i'm not gonna lie like i didn't like walking through it just you know as a guest yeah. like i uh, i think the biggest problem with me uh with the ship mazes is because i'm so tall that i was bumping my head every five minutes oh trust. <laughs> i've you know i've scared so many like you know people who are tall right that hit their head on the pipes from just being scared <laughs> like there's this one dude like I remember it was, it was, it was, I think my second year and I scared him so badly in my maze up in, in lullaby and he jumped up, like hit his head on like one of the metal pipes, right. fell to the floor, like grabbed his head and started crawling out of the room <sighs> and I wrote character because like you can, it, you heard like the ding mm. from like the metal pipe in his skull and I broke character and I looked at him and was like, man, are you okay? Do you need help? And he's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. And he just like ran. <laughs> Whoa. Like I almost killed another person. Like... Yeah. No, I, I feel, I, I know his pain. Cause I, I think I was walking through feast and in the very beginning, it's like really dark once you walk in, uh, at least it was when I went through. Cause I think we got there right when it opened and I walk, we're walking through and I turn around and talk to my friends. And the minute I turn back around, I go boom. And they all start busting up laughing. I'm like, thanks, guys, because I got a concussion. No, I'm fine, though. It's all good. Um, yeah, no, that's my. I, I think that's my only thing is, like, those mazes are scary, but I'm too tall for them. Dude, I, I used to have to walk through Feast, like, almost 70 times a night, and, like, I was always hitting stuff left and right. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, yeah, that's there. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it, it's I, but I I have to say, uh, like I when I brought up in the beginning, this is not like other events. I like that the fact that they tie in the lore of the boat to this um, event. I like how everything pretty much all ties in um, with. It just goes back to the history of the boat, which is so fascinating uh, when you think about it. Back in World War Two, man, my great grandfather came back on that boat in World War Two. So wow. I I always that boat means a lot to me. I love 
going there just to see that. Um, so I, I have to ask the question, obviously, with the history of that boat, have you seen anything out of the ordinary there? Hi. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I didn't believe in like ghosts or spirits or demons or whatever, you know, right. like, until I started working the Queen Mary, um, especially my first year. Like I feel, okay, like I do, like whenever I talk about this stuff, like I always feel like I'm crazy sometimes where I'm like, I experienced this, but like, I promise you, like it's, I experienced it. Right. Um, like. I, I, I believe the spirits like to harass new people that come in. And, you know, once you've gone through your first year and you're, you come back, you're, you know, you're kind of, cool, they're, they're cool with you, you know, like right. that, at least that's how it was with me, you know, in lullaby. And, um, but my first year, like the amount of, you know, things that happened in that, just that first year, like was crazy. I, there was, one night, you know, where I had a bruise on my thigh. Oof. I didn't even, I didn't run into anything. I didn't, you know, touch anything. I didn't do anything, but it was, the bruise was a size of like a child's hand and it was oh. in the shape of a child's hand. And that, you know, that one freaked me out. Um, I, one of the, one of the nights actually that really scared the crap out of me was, um, I was just coming back to my room um, from coming off a break. Um, so I was going to go, um, you know, break the person in my room so that they can go on break. And I walk into my room and, you know, it was a slow night. Nobody was really coming in. I think it was like a Thursday night or something. And um, in my room, you know, was my breaker. And then there was a, one of the security um, people in that room, right. so, you know, kind of chatting, you know, you know, saying, Hey, what's up? And all of a sudden we hear this like clicking noise um, down the hall, you know, um, that continues into the maze. And this hall is like a long, dark hallway. And um, in that hallway, there's a door that leads down to the boiler room. Right. And we hear this like clicking noise. And we're like, what the heck is that? So we all like, you know, have our phones on us, you know, to keep track of time. And we turn on our like phone lights, you know, to look down that hallway. And the door in that boiler room, like I shit you not, was swinging open and closing like on its own. And we were like, what the hell? If you need me, and I'll be they, at church. <laughs> right. And so then this like, you know, the, the I think the security lady was like, oh, no, it's probably the guy that comes in here to check the doors. Because there is another like team that goes, walks the maze, checks like certain doors on the Queen Mary to make sure nobody's in there and, you know, make sure, you know. Right. And like. Five seconds after she said that, the dude came walking into the door behind us and was like, what are you guys looking at? My friend left to go on break. She's like, I'm out. And I was <laughs> there and I was like, I don't want to be here. Like, <laughs> but there's, you know, like you've, yeah, it's definitely haunted. Like yep. I've in, at least in Lullaby, in my old room, there was, I could see like a shadow of a tall, like thin man standing off in the side in the corner of that room who used to like harass me big time. Um, I've heard like, you know, when you're like in your, your maze room, you, you know, the audio track, like, you know, right. by heart, you know, mm -hmm. one night I was just, I was sitting there. I heard pig squealing in my audio track and I, booked it down the hall and I freaking ran like it was like I was terrified because I've never heard it before and I right. made sure like no other noise machines like nobody's messing with me you know but like it's definitely haunted like there's like not even like a haunt haunt story but there's one night I was staying on the ship and um because I was doing like a news morning KTLA morning kind of news thing right um and this, the Queen Mary like accidentally mixed up the rooms, you know, so I was supposed to actually have a room with um, another one, the actors or whatever, right. but somehow I managed up in the like Queen Elizabeth Royal suite that had like five rooms and two like living rooms. And I was like, I called my boss and I was like, are you sure I'm supposed to be? And I'm like, yeah. Like, and I was like, okay. I'll like, take cool. It. <laughs> cool. I get like a free thousand dollar room. Like, oh, yeah. And, um, but it was ter like the vibe in there was like really, really like terrible. And right. before I went to bed, I had turned on all the lights like in like the, the room. And like, like I said, like there was like three bathrooms, 
Um, there was two living rooms, like a kitchen area. I think there was like another bedroom section and then like the master bedroom. And right. I stayed in the bedroom, but I turned on all lights and I went into the master bedroom and I closed the door. All the doors in the room, like in the room, like were open, like completely open besides my door. And like, I locked my door for some reason too, or cause I was just, I didn't feel, you know, and I was laying in bed and I had like a 3 a.m. call time or whatever, like 2 a.m. call time. I didn't even sleep because the whole night I heard the doors out in like the room, like in the, the hotel room right. opening. And like, it, it, it was, it was crazy. Like I, 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 I remember calling one of my friends that night and I was like, dude, like, I'm literally hearing like the doors opening and closing. Like that's nuts. It, it's nuts. Like yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't believe, like I said, in ghosts or you know spirits. You know, until I started working the Queen Mary, I actually didn't realize I was an empath either until like working the Queen Mary, which is one of the reasons why like I've seen and experienced and feel a lot more than you know a lot of people do. Right. But, um, yeah. No, that place is definitely haunted. Like. Yeah. I can't I've I've seen I've seen some stuff there. What about you, Sparrow? You got any stories? I honestly like when it comes to like the um anything spook like supernatural or whatnot, like if I see any shadows in any places that like I shouldn't go, I don't usually want to go there. So right. I, I kind of like say like my whole like woosa, you know, type namaste and I kinda go another direction. Right. No, I feel you on that one. Um but I you know, I, I went so long as to 2019 without having something except for once, like, and, uh, like it, it scared the crap out of me, but mm -hmm. not too bad as like, um, so what I was doing was like doing my normal walk through the mazes. Um, cause as talent supervisor, you just kind of keep going, um, you keep walking into the mazes over and over. Right. And uh, you just make sure that, like, you know, the talent are – everybody's doing good. Um, there's no, like, safety concerns. There's no, like, you know, fires, lights, or damages going on. And it's also just kind of, like, reassurance for, like, people so that they see, like, someone with, like, a dark harbor logo and someone's there to help them out. Right. Towards the end of the night, like, nothing has happened. And this is, like, going towards, like, the end of the season of, like, the, the um, haunt season. So I was like, all right, cool, another season almost done. Uh, towards the end of Feast, when you go down the escalator and you get to door 13, right? Um, there is no talent, and there shouldn't be any talent in that escalator area at all whatsoever. Why? Because it is a emergency situation type, like, you know, accident area. So, like, they don't want any talent there because they don't want them possibly hurting someone and falling down the escalator before they get to the door 13. Right. Um going around because like you have to go to a left turn and then another left and then you follow the little mini hall that goes to the escalator down um i know the clipboard that was in front of me there's no talent at all anywhere in that area within like 10 yards 10 yards of the the front of the escalator to 10 yards at the end of the escalator except for door 13 um i was going down the escalator and felt in a hand grabbed the back of my neck and like did a freeze for flip and it was so distinctive right that it wasn't like a soft hand it wasn't like a little kid's hand it was a to me it felt like a very chapped cold old man's hand like a or older man's hand like like almost to me it felt like someone who's andre the giant yes kind of like, it's the homie it had that very like this one was shoveling coal in the furnace type dude's hand wow. you know like and you know it wasn't like i i felt the hand so well that like you can tell it was like chapped and it was like dry right you know and i'm halfway down the escalator my friend so like i you know i i kind of stopped and i looked around and there should be no one on the escalator scaring at all whatsoever you know because that's that would be another situation where i'm like okay now i have to tell this talent what to do right i look around completely empty of the escalator. I, I you know i go down the escalator and i don't even i don't even waste the extra 30 seconds to look around you know like i look around and i'm like okay there's no one that could be possibly here there's right. no travelers 
I'm going to keep going. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, Wusa, I'm out. And uh, <laughs> I, what was it? Scott saw me because Scott was, you know, one of the management and a few other of the town supervisors. I was like, hey, I need a minute. Like, I need a break. And they're like, wait, what are you talking about? We don't take breaks. I was like, no, there's a situation that happened to me. And they're like, oh, something happened to you. And I was like, yeah. I was like, this is the first time it ever happened. I need like a little five to 10 minute break. And they're like, okay, just do it. <laughs> right. So like, like, so that was the only situation that happened. <laughs> like, I was like, all right, cool. I'm not, <sighs> not going to investigate. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. You're like, and I was like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that that boat's got a history, man, and I've heard some I've heard some weird stories on it this week. Um, oh, it's nuts. Uh, fuck, that's, I'm getting chills just thinking about it now. Like I could feel the goosebumps rising up. Um, all right, yeah, that one kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, both of those freaked me out. That those were two of the best ones I've heard this week, actually. Awesome. Well, it's supposed to be nights of horror. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like. I uh I have to say uh learning about you guys this week has been an absolute pleasure uh here at the Knights of Horror. Um you I I have been saying it all week but you guys together as a team are some badass motherfuckers. <laughs> Hands down. Um and I think the I think at this point the world needs to know who the Queen Mary Sliders are. Um the the name needs to get out there, um, even more than it is now, because uh, there's a lot of talented sliders out there, and you guys are definitely on the top of that list. Um, you guys go out there, put your bodies on the line, and put on one of the best goddamn shows in the in the fucking world. Um, so much so that when I actually came to Dark Harbor in 2019, I was so both shocked and happy to see that that there was a slider show there. Because I had missed that at Knots, and I didn't, I haven't said that at Knots forever. So when I saw it at Dark Harbor, I was like, I fucking missed this. I'm glad this is something that happens here. I I will s- just solely come to this event for that because I missed it that much. Yeah, um, we're, we're very fortunate that you know Dark Harbor gives us like a opportunity to have you know two shows a night. Right. You know, you know, it's it's kind of amazing. You know how much oh. they care about us. You know to give us this opportunity right like i mean i obviously i wasn't there 2019 but like i couldn't be happier with the the team you know being like the the one of the leaders of the team right um every year it keeps on getting better and like refining the craft over and over and over um things get crazier things stunts get amazing like it's it's fun and for me on on our end like we wouldn't be us if it wasn't for people like you. So like you say how good we are, I give it back to the people and being like, we couldn't be sliding. We wouldn't be there having like the group surrounding us, like having people taking pictures, photos, mm-hmm. podcasts, you know, right. like if it wasn't for the people who gave a damn about us. So we give a damn more about you than you, you do about us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this right here, like a lot of people always ask me like, oh, that's like another job for you, huh? And I'm like, no, this is not a job. This is a hobby. This is something I like to do. Whether I get one view or one million views, I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm going to do what I want and enjoy the time that I have interviewing people, filming things. I just like getting a camera and, and just filming. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I love it when I go to events because I love just getting footage of you guys um, working. I, and it's something to make for, for just in the future, for compilations, or just, just to show off how talented everyone is. Um, so I applaud you guys because uh, I think people think sliding is easy when it's really not. It's probably It takes time and effort and stamina and a lot of things to get it, to get it you know, safely done. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, the body. Like, yeah. you know, people, people don't realize, you know, the damage uh, that we go through, you know, like there's a lot of, you know, teeny boppers that come up to us, you know, at Dark Harbor, like, oh, I want to do this. How easy is this to do? You know, or like some, you know, people who, you know, go to our boot camps who do think like, you know, like it's so easy to get in and to, you know, get to the position that we are at. And it's, it's not like, you know, like 
you know, for some it is easy to get in because they're more talented than like the next or whatever, you know, but, you know, like I said, I worked my ass off, you know, for five years to get to become a slider on the team. And it's, you know, it is very grueling. It's very taxing on your body. And, you know, it's like, I mean, I, I tell anybody just because I've been doing it for like, so long um when someone wants to get into it i'm like well do you have an extra 120 dollars just to 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 hold around (laughs) what i was like yeah on average it costs about 120 dollars just to kind of get into it um and that's like that's going from your steel caps to your shoes to your pads to your you know what type of gloves to the duct tape to the zip ties to the you know like your hot box your wax having like something to contain it and then it's like i tell people like one fair warning it's like it's a it's considered like you know it's considered you're you're endangering yourself it's stunts Mm -hmm. so you might twist an ankle you might are you yeah are you you willing to put your (laughs) body you know at risk because i mean like i you know sadly created tendonitis in my wrist because of wow. sliding and you know i fucked my knee up so many times i know his knees are terrible and you know there's other people on the team who's like broken bones during shows yeah. you know like right. you know, and it's it's but we still do it because like, we love it i mean you can you can dish out two hundred dollars out of your pocket get the top of the line stuff and have this you know steel or this sparker but i'm like with actually doing it putting your body into it and actually learning the craft it's a whole different ball game you can't just spend 200 dollars and be like i'm a slider you got to th- go through it like i'm i'm happy that we created over the years um the progression of the boot camp right because not only do we get to teach us and people who want to work dark harbor but we get to teach people who want to learn the craft and go somewhere else you know want to go to knots want to go to you know universal or want to go to you know six flags and i I'm, I'm glad that we we created a safe haven for all haunts to learn in orange county at least and actually we've expanded on the east coast too with the the dark horizon mm-hmm. right. um, so it's like i'm proud that we get to teach something to people who care about it enough you know and it's like like Bree said there's some people that get into it and they like start in the very beginning barely make it halfway right you know and it's like we we have steps it's we've brought things down to almost like a month to month science where it's like all right next month we're gonna learn this next week we're gonna know that you know like and it's like by the time we get to the your uh, testing point you should be able to know everything mm-hmm. you know and if you didn't know then it all falls down on you yeah. you know right. like so it's it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I always I say, man. Bad. I feel bad myself because when I took the year off, now I got to work double the t- okay. <laughs> just but to get back into it. All of us have to work harder now, <laughs> right. considering you know right. 2020 kind of like canceled our whole entire yeah. season. So now we have to catch up another like two years or right. whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, um, I always look at sliding to me. It's like a fucking art. It's like taking the Mona Lisa and fucking sliding with it. That's what I always that's what I always say with it, man. That's that's the Mona Lisa of fucking intense sports right there. Like that is one of the most bitchin' things I've ever seen at any haunt. And it just fuck, man. Every time I see it, I'm just like, this is fucking cool. Like I love this is why I love coming to these haunts because of fucking sliding. I was so excited this year when I went to uh what was it? Urban Legends drive through. I saw someone slide and I was like, I have not seen one slider this year. That made my freaking entire freaking haunt season right there. Yeah. Luckily, you know, we are very, you know, thankful and grateful that we have found a kind of like a home away from home right, right. now. Um, we've been doing these events with um, Street Food Tuesday and um, Cyprus. Um, you know, they've been so great to us and humbling to us that we have a spot, you know, every couple months, you know, every, you know, big holiday, we do an event now there. And um, it gives us a chance to come out, you know, it gives a chance to see, you know, our fans to see people who we haven't seen in forever. 
and you know it gives the community like we we're giving something to the community you know in the time being right you know we we're so thankful you know like that we have this home away from home you and know? They actually hang out with uh, some of the fans that we do have and like you know the family members that like you know know us and stuff where it's like hey come up and chat with us you know hey like i'm gonna go scare this random person who doesn't they're going up to a food truck you know they're i don't think they're they know that they're gonna get scared i'm gonna go grab them chill mm-hmm. watch this you know like <laughs> It's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I'm definitely going to be, uh, well, if when this comes out, it would have already have passed, but the one coming up, mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to try to make that one. Um, I know, luckily, one it goes on. Massive. Like, we, we have. Well, the, the podcast is going to be coming out after the fact. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, what, yeah. yeah, that's what he For just sure. said. Yeah. But, yeah, no, like, we, we're still going to be doing these events with Street Food Tuesday because, right. like I said, they've been so good to us and you know like we just want to help them out help out the food trucks that are there you know get some revenue in and uh, you know especially during these times um but like you know like i said obviously now like the podcast is gonna be coming out after the fact that february 9th is our next one which is valentine's day event right Um, but we're probably going to be doing one for you know saint patrick's day or you know, whatever Easter. Easter, or, yeah. Get shut down. We're probably going to be doing every major holiday. Fourth <laughs> yeah. of July would be a killer one, right there, man. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's and the cool part about it is like that gets to be new too because like every new holiday, it's different theme. Right. Yeah, so like it, Christmas, we actually got yeah. to do like a cool Christmas theme. Like we were elves, you know, like creepy dark elves. Yeah, like, that's right. We don't there. Do something like that, you know. So right. it's you know we're so thankful that we have this space right now until dark Harbor comes back and, you know, it's, we're just a waiting game, you know? <laughs> and I heard actually the first time you guys showed up at, with the team, tons of people came out to support you guys and support the trucks and everything, which was awesome. It was, it was very insane. like, <laughs> it was cool. We had like a humbling like experience. Cause like we, we had like pictures with like our emoji cons. Right. that uh, like it had like all of our characters faces and it was like people were you know buying you know photos of our likeness you know and like right. we were we were signing them and stuff like that and like it was really kind of cool like it was a like it, it was a cool experience because we were like we don't normally get to do this right ever. so like we got to do that you know and we got to meet the community and we got to see everyone so and it was you know, we were still practicing social distancing. We had our masks on and everything. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, we're doing fist bumps left and right and stuff like that. But it was just, it was a great reun- uh, reuniting feeling because it was like, we didn't have a haunt. So it was like, hey, it's good seeing you. I haven't seen you in forever. Glad you're, you know, safe and everything. You know, and I'm just, I'm glad it's working out for you guys. That's, that's awesome to hear that you guys still, uh, as the team, get to get together and still see each other, uh, scare together, have a good time. And you guys, I have seen it on, on social media. You guys are very safe when it comes to this, especially with right now. Um, you guys are very safe. And you guys get really creative, especially with the whole face coverings and stuff. You you, you put it in with your your characters, which I think is so damn fucking bitching. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, that's, that's like another learning and experience, too. It's like, how can you slide with seeing half of your face? Right. You, know, and can you scare someone with half of your face and just your eyes. Yeah. yeah. It's, right. it's it's a new challenge but it's it's very re- rewarding you know it's... right man that's so cool so i'm gonna try my best to make it out to the february 9th when i get off work at six i know it goes on till nine um so i i will i, I work in narwhal so if, if i can zoom over to cyprus i, I i'm going to do my best sure. to make it out there the food is amazing Food's yes amazing. <laughs> like all the food trucks i mean there's at, at least at this event there's gonna be 13 food trucks at this one yeah. now so you don't gotta sell me on food like you you just say <laughs> the main food i'll be there like you'll be standing there for like maybe 45 minutes just deciding That's what <laughs> I do. <laughs> so like if, if i if i'm like you know if i'm like stuffing my face and you guys come up to me like hey what's going on I'm just like, what's going yeah. on <laughs> uh, i want to thank you too for coming on this was a, a very awesome uh experience for me uh to learn about the entire team to learn how close you guys are as a family um i got two more questions for you usually the hardest ones for all my guests but you guys you guys know your stuff so it might be a real easy one for you um first of the two if you can work any haunt uh other than dark harbor for one night where would you work and why 
You want to go? If I could work any haunt. I already know mine. Like, I personally would love to have, like, a night at 17th door. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, 17th, I mean, no, no, no hate to, you know, Dark Harbor, or not Dark Harbor, but Knots or Horror Nights. Um, right. Personally, I don't get scared at Horror Nights or, you know, Knots for me. I go for the atmosphere to, to, to watch the scare actors, you know, it's for set decoration, that kind of thing. Um, right. I'm, I'm very desensitized in that sense when it comes to, like, just normal haunts. But 17th Door has managed to scare the living shit out of me multiple times. Um, and it's, I do believe it's because, you know, they can touch you, they can fuck with you, you know. Um, he saw the, for the very first time this last year because um, they were they were open, you know, in right. 2020. Um, and mind you, it was, I never felt more safer, like protocol wise, you know, for COVID, they did a really amazing job, you know, yeah. like, right. with their COVID protocols. Um, but he's never seen me more terrified in my life. Like he's never seen me. I was me. surprised. Yeah. Like <laughs> we had a couple friends who were actually working, you know, 17th door the, that, the night we came in right. and they were like, Brie, you're scared? Like what? Like what's going on? Like, I'm like, like going through no, door to like know. ten to eleven, and I'm just like, babe, are you serious? Are I was serious? crying, like sobbing, like having panic attacks, like. But I would love to work it one night just to like to experience what those monsters experience because I feel like that's just a whole nother level, whole nother adrenaline rush, you know, being able to like touch and like you know fuck with the guests a lot more you know, on a personal, deeper <laughs> level, I guess, you know, like, but that I, I already know that's like the one I would love for. <laughs> I am six foot six. I will never go to that event because I do not <laughs> like what? being, I do not like being touched. I, I, I respect every scare actor and I, and I respect boundaries and I do that. I just have a feeling that if I get touched with something, something's going to come out of me where I'm going to ball up a fist and I don't want that to happen. Listen, I've, I bought the bitch stick, what I love calling the bitch stick. It's like a little glow stick where you can say like, nope, to like whatever you don't feel comfortable with. Right. I said, nope, so many times. <laughs> like, I'm but like, you know was, what? Call me. I, I tell him like, call me a bitch. I don't care. I just don't want to be touched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here for the experience. I don't want to be touched. Mm -hmm. What about you? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's hard. Like, I, I don't know. Like I, I'm a, there's. There's something from other haunts that like I I want to work there for this reason I want to work for there for that reason like right. um I know a buddy of mine that's opening up in a, an event um it's kind of a secret right now but there's like I would I would definitely want to work that uh, event once it gets uh going um but um shoot this is hard because they like I mean I've already did knots so I already did dark harbor um i'd like to say just for the trademark purposes like i think i would like would want to experience one or two years at universal nice and nice, and, and check it out you know and see how it is and stuff like that um there, there's a lot of great people that i knew came from there and had fun i, know. I could see you wearing, well, i can see you holding a chainsaw scaring the Maybe. shit out of me I don't know if I'm that good yet, oh, <laughs> you know, but like, it, it's always kind of. I love to do that. <laughs> fun. I don't know. There's like, there's something about like, kind of like being on the back lot, you know? Yeah. And, like, and the history and some of that and being like, okay, I, I definitely want to try this out and, you right. know, work with, uh, with Murdy's, right? Crew. Yeah. John so, Murdy, Chris Williams, man. Those guys just, I just have one request for Horror Nights. Please, for the love of God, get rid of black walls. Oh my God. Yes. Jesus Christ. Please. Like, oh, I hate, like, I feel like, you know, 2019, there was so many, like, it feels like every year, like, you know, I'm not, you know, trying to hate on Horror Nights. Right. I love Horror Nights to death. Like, you know, I have some really good close personal friends who work Horror Nights, but I feel like every year for the last maybe five years, they've just been adding more and more black walls. And it's just it's getting to the point where it's kind of like overused and overdone especially like the pop-out walls too mm -hmm. but 
you know, like I still love going, I still love going to check out, you know, the set decorations. And again, I give the actors their props because I could not do, you know, a scene after scene after scene like that for like an hour straight. You right. know, I would, I would crack and be like, I'm out, I quit. The <laughs> one maze I will give a 10 out of 10 and, it, and it's perfect in my eyes. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh my God. That yeah, was that good. was amazing. I love that movie to death. I, it's my goal to interview everyone from that movie. I've done three. I need to do some more. So I, I, when I, when I finally, when, okay, when it came to Orlando, I was pissed. I was mm -hmm. like, you bastards get a freaking scare zone. And I've been praying for that to come to the event. Mm -hmm. I was pissed too. Like, <sighs> when I Orlando, like, got that. Okay. I was pissed that Orlando this year, this last year, had like a mini Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Name. And Beetlejuice was supposed to be here this year. And that's like my favorite thing. Yep. I, on, I yeah. wanted Beetlejuice bad. I, I had one of the best fan experiences with Beetlejuice at uh, Horror Nights in 2019 for Throwback Thursday. He uh, hosted the concerts that happened at the bottom. And yeah, me, yeah, me and, <laughs> yeah, me and him sung Another One Bites the Dust together. And it was one of the best things ever. I was like, <laughs> this is great. I'm like, if only, uh, if only it was Michael Keaton, it'd probably be way better. But <laughs> no, I, 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 I really hope that they bring that maze. This, you know, hopefully this year if it opens up. If they don't, I'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> From what I heard, in order to keep it, so they can bring it back next year or whenever they decide to open, they had to do that weekend preview. Yeah. So, it Orlando's looked fantastic. It did. It looked amazing. And I was just so blown away um, that I was kind of scared to see what Murdy was going to do with it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yours is so good. And I know Murdy will go from scene to scene to scene to scene all the way to from start to end. But how many black walls will be in between? That Yeah, that's the only that's the only downfall with Horror Nights. That's the only, I feel like that's the only complaint I have with Horror Nights is just the black walls. But everything else, like, you know. Like I said, I love Horror Nights. On the that. note of on the on the note of Beetlejuice, I I, I loved your guys' cosplays, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I remember seeing that one. That was a that was a really cool one. It was really fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, but on what is it? Six Flags. If they weren't so far away, because we have <laughs> we have good like extended family there. Right. And I, I love uh I, I love our people over there. Like, but it, if it wasn't so far away, I would want to like work there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's another haunt I would love to work. Um, it would be Higby. Yeah. Higby haunt. There Heathen, are Heathen legions. Heathen legions. They're they're also they're like a, a family haunt too. You know, we call them family because like, they're right. they're amazing. Ohana. Um, <laughs> but they're up towards where they at again? They're up north. Up north, yeah. And okay. um, you know, like I didn't get to go with the team the last time that they were there. The Christmas um, event. Yeah, the Christmas event. But I, if you know, they open up this year, I would love to you know go out there and scare with our family out there so that's another you know shout out to higby because be fun one right there drop the shout outs cool. yeah they're really cool um last one sometimes the hardest for most people but who knows maybe you guys will get this right off the bat what's your favorite horror film mm. really <laughs> I, I knew it. dang I, uh. two for two huh Okay, if it wasn't, okay, because I don't really count it, okay, for actual horror, it would be House of a Thousand Corpses, um, The Devil's, Re you know, Devil's Rejects. Love that, The Devil's Rejects. Yeah, um, even Three from Hell was, you know, it was, it felt kind of like Devil's Rejects, but still, it was, you know, pretty good. Um, if you really want to say this one, you can. Yeah, <laughs> I want to, but like, I personally don't <laughs> categorize it as horror, because it, to me, it's more like kitty horror you know yeah but i do like beetlejuice is my all-time favorite you know movie but house of thousand corpses is definitely my favorite horror movie yeah that's know, a great it's, one it's it's good <laughs> okay i got two. Oh god <laughs> all right because it's uh it's my boy johnny depp's first one so nightmare on elm street classic and i'm i i didn't grow up with the slashers so when it came to watching slasher movies and stuff like that like i didn't get scared of it like michael myers didn't scare me because i just thought he was like kind of silly by the time i got to watch it right but the one that kind of messed me up that i still love to this day is probably the shining that is such a great psychological horror um, 
I had no idea what was going on when I first saw the movie. Yeah. Kind of everything know now and still love it. I like, even so shocked of how good Dr. Sleep was. Oh my god, it was amazing. It was like, a great uh a great tribute to the book and a great tribute to uh Kubrick's uh, a great sequel to Kubrick's film. It was amazing. You know? I I like I had goosebumps when I heard the music going back to the hotel towards the end. I was like, "Oh my god, they're doing this shot for shot. This is beautiful." Oh yeah. Um, it's, it's a stunning film. Yeah, beautiful. I'm what you fan of the psychological thrillers? Psychological. Yeah. I mean, I go more for gore. You know, like I, I'm, I'm more of a gore fan. Yeah, I, you, so know, like, like, you like the saw films and stuff like that. I love the saw films. I, I'm a, actually a huge fan of the Human Centipede, like that franchise. Okay. I, love it. I mean, it's, it's not for everybody. Right. But I do love the concept and what they were trying to go for, even the cheesiness of the last film. Right. Um, but I love, you know, hostile, those kinds of films, you know, like it's, I'm more gore. He's more of that like psychological. I'm more like torture in the mind, like Parasite. Parasite Uh, was freaking phenomenal. You know, some, some, I like, I like movies that make you think for like years upon years about it and being like, what would you do in that situation? Well, you can't do anything because it's still going to mess you up later up. Uh, what is it? The fourth kind? Oh, dude, the fourth kind was so good. And the fact that it's based on, like, a true story, I was like, what the hell is going on, dude? If I was a parent, I'd lose my shit. I don't even know if I can live on. I mean, like, okay, yeah, you guys are parents now, so you know, like, if, you know, if anything were to happen, like, it's going fight mode. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like like I said, uh, she was watching it the other day, like, movies like VHS, you know, where you're just like, oh, okay, all the music are going down. Stuff like that. Yeah, VHS viral fucked me up. I think when I watched it for the first time, I was like, what? "That's a good one." I yeah. love VHS viral. That's, I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of the first movie in in viral. Then. Yeah, it was it was nuts. Um, all the things that were going on in that film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are. Uh, I love psychological horror. It, it's good. I love. I try to watch it all. Last night I watched uh, Freaky. Oh, that's such that's a good, good film. I was, like uh, was, Vince I, Vaughn, dude. It was. <laughs> you sold it. Yeah, I was, did. I, very surprised um when theaters were kind of open you know um for a short time right. here in, in california um that we actually went out and saw freaky in theaters and it was worth it you know like it was kind of it was a really good film was, was i like the a- only one that was thinking vince vaughn reminded you of jason in the very beginning just him looking like an unstoppable being yes <laughs> oh yeah i totally love the reference that yeah. he was doing like it was pretty it was pretty good and the the killing scenes were totally brutal different too i was like yeah oh, i haven't seen this before like dang brutal yeah I, I liked how they looked a lot of it looked practical too so that was cool it, it very looked it, it looked a lot of you know practical kind of makeup like and- besides because he was uh what was it so, uh, he was psycho right the third psycho. in the in the reboot yeah the yeah, reboot, the reboot one. So, like, I haven't seen this side of, of Vince Vaughn in a right. very long time when he was, like, a villain. So, I was just like, dang, man, you still have it. Like, you still got yeah. the villain side. Mm-hmm. I'm used to seeing the uh, the dodge the dodgeball right. internship. <laughs> Wedding Vince Crasher. Vaughn. Wedding Crasher. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was he sold that thing, dude. And it was just, it was great. Him playing the, the teenage girl part was just hilarious. So good. So good. It was great. Um I want to thank both of you for taking the time. I know you guys are parents now, and it's it's hard to, to get some time away, but thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. That was really awesome. Thank yeah, thank you thank for, you for inviting us. us you know, yeah. like it, we're really happy that we got to you know finally sit down and do this, and you know, it's it was really fun. Yeah, it was cool. Thank yeah, you. I had a fun time. I had a fun week. I want to thank all the Queen Mary Dark Harbor Sliders. Uh, you guys are fucking legends, and I can't wait uh, after this is all over. I've been promising everyone. Everyone in person, whether it's 45 minutes or three hours and 45 minutes, we're going to have a fucking long podcast, everyone together. I so. would that. Well, that's going to be madness. <laughs> it's going to be madness. It's going to be fun. And you know what? I'm going to make it even worse. I'm inviting Dieterman, too. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be like, I, I feel like that podcast would be like a six hour. Like, six hour. Would... It's going to be like split into two hours, three weeks, you know. 
popcorn sitting and around drinks. the campfire you know yeah <laughs> yeah man I mean, that'd be fun so um before we go do you guys want to plug in any social medias you guys have they can look for you on on social media um well you know i'm i'm currently the qm sliders pr person so i would love to plug our own social media which is the qm sliders um find us on instagram um facebook we have a tiktok that we rarely post on <laughs> but we do have tiktok um that's we have a website but i don't think the website's up anymore um but yeah it's qm sliders on all social media platforms um shutters on you know social media for me that's my you know my social media for the creative side and his is papa bird sparrow but it changes all the time <laughs> <laughs> just type a sparrow you should find it maybe you'll find sparrow yeah. um and then like for just queuing other people's uh slider dynamics which yes is the team. mr Dieterman. Uh, we got northwest possession of angel uh rash right he's a, um, a patch member on the team um obviously uh higby horror yes higby horror heathen legion which is an another amazing i believe they writer. follow me on instagram actually the, exi really cool. the exile brothers exile brothers go nice. follow them yeah um got to give a shout out to the uh members of the decay brigade yes decay brigade <laughs> um, Decade. trying to think of other ones like uh, our other friends you know like we we got so many you know um what were, the, what were the ones from the Spooky Z? Spooky Boo? Those sliders? I'm drawing a blank. I know these sliders that go to the Spooky Z Expo in Garden Walk. Scare Squad Society? There we yeah, go. Scare yeah. Squad Society. Yeah. Had them on the podcast, yes. Great people. Yeah. Those dudes, we just met them, like portions of them, like uh, about a couple weeks ago. So we're like, we're meeting, slowly meeting them. And the, the QM Sliders does have a boot camp um, that to learn how to slide. Currently, it's on pause because of COVID. We had to cancel last year's. We don't know if it's going to happen again this year. We haven't talked about it. Um, we're just kind of seeing, you know, state guidelines as well as, you know, Chapman Sports Park. Currently, we don't go to Chapman Sports Park because of COVID restrictions and stuff. Right. But um, hopefully when stuff gets, you know, more loosened up and, you know, a lot more safer, we well, will start boot camp yeah, again. The, the less people that are there, the safer it will be. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'd rather wait until everything is good to go and then, you know, get the, the go ahead. So we're One more plug. I would love to um, shout out to Street Food Tuesday again, because they have been, again, a home away from home for us. Um, and they do every Tuesday. They have food trucks. They have different people Scooters coming. Scooters Italian ice cream. Yeah, Scooters Italian ice that cream. Bomb. Amazing, amazing desserts. It's good. Um, but they have been so great, you know, great with us. And yeah. um, every Tuesday from five to nine p.m. at um, in Cypress, which mm. in a Home Depot parking lot, is where that is and that's where we're going to be until dark harbor yes <laughs> so. yeah. oh, show some support and so. follow everyone they just mentioned and tell them knights of horror sent you yes and knights of horror <laughs> <laughs> um again thank you guys so much i i am beyond grateful for this experience and i am glad i've made some new friends in the haunt community i always love doing that um mm -hmm. and i can't wait for that 150 percent energy of opening night of dark harbor i know I I, back, i'm ready i feel like that energy is going to be the most like extreme energy like we've ever done because all like like i said harbor is a giant family yeah. like you know no matter what issue goes down you know we're always a family we stick together and right we all miss each other and it's I, we're all looking forward that for the day the, to come back and you know be able to scare again and i know yes. that is for you know every everywhere so as a fan we're ready to come back too <laughs> can't wait to see you guys i'm so excited um i want to give a, a round of applause for the closing of our queen mary dark harbor sliders takeover it has been an excellent month i hope everyone has enjoyed getting to know them way more as people behind the scenes unveil of who they are 
It has been a fun and awesome experience for me and uh, such amazing people, um, such very talented people, and I can't wait to see what happens with them in the future. Again, congratulations to both Shutters and Sparrow on your baby boy. That is an amazing gift that life can give you, and uh, I don't doubt in my mind you guys are going up in the future going to be the best parents possible. So, Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Congratulations, <laughs> and I can't wait to see – your baby boy grow up. It's going to be fun. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us on the show, man. Yeah. No problem. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed tonight's podcast, make sure to hit that subscribe button with that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video. Also, hit that like button and leave them to some comments. Show them your love and support because uh, they probably will read them. Just don't be a, <laughs> again, another PSA. Just don't be an asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being said, I'm your host, Anthony. This is the Mindless Horror Podcast here on the Knights of Horror, and we will see you guys next week for another episode of the podcast. We'll see you soon.